All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our special uh, scheduled meeting for uh, June 12, 2023, 6 p.m. at the Shelter House. Uh, Ms. Berner is not here, so uh, Mr. Bridge will be filling in as our clerk this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Sure. And if you would call roll, please. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Cook? Yeah. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? I'm here. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. We have six <coughs> members present. Thank you. And I forgot to ask before the meeting, would anybody like to do the invocation? Go ahead. Mr. Lindsay will do the invocation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this meeting this evening to re redo our charter and look at it and make it better for our city. Father, we ask you to keep an eye and your hand upon our firefighters and military our police officers and this council and the city administration, Father. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, liberty, justice for all. <clears throat> all right, moving on. Uh, action amendments, non communication <coughs> funds, city manager's report, non comments from members of the public. Anything? All right, thank you. If you happen to come up with any questions, since it's you know, a small audience, just give me an order, raise your hand. Uh, committee reports, non resolutions, ordinances, zip, other business, discussing or discussion on the following. So we'll start off with uh, the charter review where uh, we left off about a month or so ago, I guess, and uh, you defend. Well, and finish it up and get it to the Board of Election by August to get it on the ballot. So um, I gotta pull that up. Not very far, actually. Okay, so we're at section 504. I guess, um, you know, anybody feel free to speak up when we go through this. Um, I guess we just want to go through them paragraph by paragraph, section by section. If anybody has any issues, Mr. Bridge, anybody? I have no problem with this whole section. Section? We've had, we've had it long enough. We should have read it. Right. Which section? Or section 5? 5.04. Okay. <laughs> That's where we're at. Mr. Mayor. Sir. In, in effort of transparency, um, if, you, if you don't mind, I can actually review the notes from 5.01 that Please. we have done. So um, we're going to have Jake further clarify residency requirements against current law for the charter compliance. Um, I basically know a little bit about that, but I am have Jake clarify that out. So it is you can't require residency requirements for your city manager. Uh, you can if you like classify it as a safety sensitive position, um, although most cities actually waive that requirement, um, especially in smaller municipalities, um, because that's where you know you lose your talent pool should you require someone to live inside your city limits. Uh, so that was discussed. Uh, we have also discussed removing I, provide staff support for mayor and council members, and add these responsibilities to the clerk of council. And that's all we got done with that. I have no other notes, but. Uh, my notes on my paper say that we ended at 5.03, so we'll start at 5.04. All right, thank you, sir. Yep. <clears throat> I don't think that section, this section, had any changes from the commission at all, anyway. Um, 5.06, the system manager will cry if we can't count to no less than 30 days' notice. There's 60 days in parentheses. I think we had discussed that. Um, or they had wanted you guys to discuss it. So it is, it is an option I think that you guys should look at. Um, 30 days is probably about standard. 60 days, it's kind of hard for someone to give a 60 day notice. Um, and quite frankly, they'll probably end up using their vacation anyway. So if they're jumping ship to another job, they're not going to wait two months to take it. So. Um, I'm not sure why they put the 60 in there. I just assume they wanted you guys to look at that. Okay. I don't have a problem with changing it to 30. 30. Council down. It's it's 30. Currently. Leave it leave it at 30. 30 the 60 is the suggested. I say it's 60 here. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can you can no, that's the suggested. That was his. Oh no. 
Oh, no. You know, you can look at different increments. You can look at a 45-day notice. You can look at whatever you have to keep in mind, just to be fully fair, because this is not about us or and about you. It's about guiding the city together. Your managers do get four weeks vacation a year. You know, and if we can't take that in that four weeks, it does, we can stack up to two years. You know, so sometimes um, if, if the manager goes out in a certain way, they may just enter and say, fine, I'm done, I'm using the rest of my vacation. And that will classify and count as their 30-day requirement. Now, what that does is it lessens the cash out that the city has to pay because they're using that vacation time, mm -hmm. you know, or they stick it out and wait the 30 days. So it, it really depends on how that manager is going to leave. It's in the, if it's under good circumstances or bad circumstances, you usually how that plays out. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the 30, the original 30 days that was in there. Yeah. And yeah. more likely, if they're trying to leave out on a bad term, no one wants to be there, so it's probably best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we leave that at 30, it back to 30, so that there will be no amendment to it then, right? It, it, it yeah, it just stay stays in the same. It just stays, yep. Okay. Yep. Now I'm good with 30. Okay. So I'll cross that 60. Uh, unless council wants to entertain 45. I think it's worked since 1998 is 30. <laughs> yeah. Relatively, you don't have a lot of turnover in your management position. Yeah. You really don't. They usually stick around unless something comes up, unfortunately. All right, 16, or I mean 6.01. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the only change I thought I saw was B, direction of, of my city manager, uh, section B of that. I don't think there's anything in the first one. Which, uh, where are you at, Bill? What are you talking about? 601, Section B. Oh, Section Direction B. by City Manager. I think that's a change. I'm going to pull it up now. I don't remember exactly what the change was because I don't have an old copy. Of um, so I got it. I'm sitting here looking. I'm bringing it up to you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you mind if I speak? Yeah, go ahead. So 6.01, the current charter, it doesn't have it broken down in the A and B. Um, if you want me to read the current charter for you, I will. Um, it's one, two, three, four paragraphs. It may repeat what's on here. Again, they may have just separated it out to make it easier to follow. That's current, the way I'm seeing it. Yeah, the current, uh, let me just do a quick little, the current established ordinance combined charter departments. No function of scene. Offices, commissions, all departments, all the It looks like they just changed it around a little bit. Yeah. I think it generally says the same thing. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. And the goal of the charter review that council set out was to make this more user friendly right. for the average reader. So when you look at some of the stuff I submit to you guys, instead of giving you a lot, four or five, six paragraphs, I'll bullet point it. No one wants to read 14 pages of complete paragraphs, complete sentences. If you can bullet point it and get your point across, it makes it a lot more easier. I think here with this, what they did again is just separate that out so there's more direction between what, how you create it and then really how it's directed by your man, the city manager. So, um, and that's also attested by that, that is the only two things in there that are italicized. But it seems like there's more. And then 6.02 looks pretty much the same. So we have a civil service commission. Um, we have to do an annual report on that commission every year. Um, the state used to not be so um, strict on it. Now they, now they are that we have to submit it every year. Here's where the civil service w gets, it, gets it with us. Our current charter, um, the only thing that they would interview are police. Since we contract out, they never meet. Now, you shouldn't mend it or change it because you never know in 10 to 15 years should we have something or the state changes law about what they cover and what they don't or internally we change something. It's there, but currently they're not an active group. So it probably could stay the exact same. You're talking about 6.02? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, anybody see any issues with that? No, I just, 
And going on to 6.03. So it looks like they changed some things up on 6.03 because 6.03 currently is departmental wall. So they added a whole new section between because 6.04 yeah. is being so this whole personnel system is um, new. New. And now that I think I understand their system, so it's italicized. So I'm assuming all the following text after that would have to be loaded into. So similar to how they broke up the last thing between manager and then the. Um, well, it says that it was amended March 22nd, but that's the date they did it, 22. And all those amended dates would have to be changed. So it would be changed when you guys the vote, vote, vote. Yep. <clears throat> Before it's published. So it would be, it'd be amended November 5th, whatever date on 2023. Yeah, kind of like November 7th. See, it's always amended in November right. 3rd. Yeah. yeah. So that would, if you guys want to keep that, that would have to go to your ballot. And I haven't, let me read it real quick. I don't see You don't mind i would like to check with jake on yeah. that merit system to make sure it's not any kind of conflict with our collective bargaining agreement okay. uh, that merit system mm -hmm. with the contract is in violation this would be in violation of the contract well i want to let jake look at it where the contract would be in violation of this because they don't want a merit system. You tried to do that, not this last time. What back when I was on council before, you tried to do a merit system. I've been doing it every year since I've been here. Huh? I've been trying it every year since I've been here. Yeah, well, I know, stuff. but, you know, yeah. but well, in the last two years, you also got, and they just absolutely refused it. So I don't think that, uh, and this would not, uh, I don't believe it would supersede the contract. But I think it may prevent you from signing a contract with that. So I agree with the manager of, of having Jake look at this because I think it, the two would not would not they'd be in conflict with each other with the union contract and our and our uh, charge. So I, in my opinion, Jake will probably say I don't know. When Jake. is the when's the next union contract coming up? It's a couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but they, they never will do that. They, they don't want it. I mean, for the city, it would be awesome because then, okay, uh, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a guy that don't, doesn't do his job, and Peggy does her job, so we're going to give Peggy a raise, you ain't getting squat because you don't do nothing. And you come to work late, take extra lunch, you know, you, you're a trouble, problem child. And that's what a merit system is for. Yeah. Well, if it's, if it's is, that, is that not correct? That's what I'm saying. So yeah, I want to get. That's why the I, manager I, wants a merit system, but union fights him on it every time. Let's just get Jake's opinion on it, and yeah. then more importantly, I'll. I have a really good relationship with Scott, our union big union guy in Dayton, um, and just see what we can come up with because it, it could be a tricky slope with the collective bargaining agreement. And okay. union. Right. And it may be something that we're interpreting wrong, and Jake's like, "No, run with it," you know. But we just got to see how that impacts that particular agreement. Okay. So, but A, I think it's fine. Merit principle, I don't have any issues with that. Because <coughs> we kind of have that now in the current agreement. Like if we have a, a, a internal job posting that is covered by the current agreement, we have to post it internally. But we are able to reject based off qualification. If we feel as though they're yeah. qualified. Okay. The next two, they, they didn't make didn't any change changes anything. at all in them. I don't they didn't make any changes to, well, how this works is we probably, I'm not going to ask Jake this, so I only know this. Like if we were doing this out as a legislative piece, we would then have to amend 6.0, like where Department of Law is. It would be a 6.03 with a three slashed out and a four next to it with the italicized. Because that's how I amend now. So I have to ask Jake, if that goes to the ballot, do we actually have to put that on the ballot to change 6.04, 6.03 to 6.04? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm 
Is that all they did was just add to point oh four? Yeah, they moved the current 6.03 is Department of Law, but they put it down to 6.04 to put that merit stuff in. 6.03 is new. Right. Mm -hmm. Jay's look at numbering. Okay. Um, let me see what, what they got here. 6.04. 6.04. Since the numbers change, you probably have to do that. With, um, see what Jake says. So it looks like they added stuff to this. Yeah, it's much bigger. What? Oh, wait a minute. No, because everything's dropped down one number now since they added that. Oh, they, okay, so absolutely the current 6.04. No, no. Yeah, 6.04 no. is Department of Law. Yep, you're right. I got, okay, so let me look at this again. I'm sorry. I didn't know they, okay, so that is Department of Law now. So absence is there. Okay, Department of Law, hereby, State of Ohio. We check, that's saying Director of Law shall be advisor. Check. Ends with Boston Judge, former city manager. Yeah, I don't think they changed anything but the number. Okay. So absence of law still says the same thing. And the absence of the law, yes. And then last is president, office of the law. That's the same. Okay. Department of Public Safety, 606. City manager, director of law. All the following divisions, yeah. Police <coughs> Six oh six looks good. You all right with that, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, I just want to make sure it doesn't say anything about I have to be in charge of fire. So I delegated that to Howie. I think the only changes they made in, in like the Department of Public Service, the Department of Finance, and that's the only two I can see right now, is they changed the numbers, the sections, because they added 0, 6.03. Three. I think that's that's the only thing that's been changed. I, I'm not seeing anything that's different. No. You know, uh, Especially with the Department of Safety, the Division of Fire, I do want to keep in there may include full-time because one of the things I do want to bounce around is not so much go to a full-time department, but in the next two or three years, once the developments come in, we got some more funding coming in, is make the fire chief a full-time position, mm. just the fire chief itself. I thought um, it was already full-time. No. Nobody's there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not at all. Because um, then he can help with some other stuff, and then he can really run the department how it is, because it's going to get busier as we oh, yeah. more houses. So that's in the that's in a five-year plan. But I don't want to take that out just in case that goes that way. Of course, it's up to council's final decision. And any time that we change that to a full time, council would actually have to vote that in. That would, so that would fall under creation of departments. Oh, I don't know because it already says it can. It'd still be discussed with council because you guys have to approve the wages in the budget. So some way, shape, or form, you'd have your hands on it. Okay. All right. So six oh seven. You're still on six six. I'm done. Moving on. Six oh seven. Department of Public Service. I think it's still the same. Okay. Five minutes and then five minutes. When's the fiscal year now? Is it something different than the calendar year? Mm -mm. What did they change here? Because I don't see anything on, on 7.01 that they changed, but they said they amended it on March 22nd of, of 2022. Does it have March 20, March? Oh, they might have just meant to put X's in there. You're at 7.01, I'm at 6.08. Yeah, we're on 08. I thought we were done with that. Mm -mm. So one of the things I do want to encourage you guys to kind of look at and it probably should stay in there. There are some cities in there given full authority to your city manager to fire your key positions. As of right now, for me to terminate your finance director or your law director, I have to come to you guys. You know, that is it under the table. Everything else is I can do on my own. Um, you really want to keep that in there, your finance director, as far as being a mutually consenting thing with council. Um, prime example, there is the city manager right now up in, I think, Hilliard or something like that in Columbus. 
her name is Michelle Crandall. She ended up terminating her finance director uh, because she had covered up the finance director. I don't know if it's he or she had coming up covered up that the city had lost two hundred thousand dollars in the fishing scam. Okay, mm. <laughs> so she fired him, and then she did not get council consent. And council's coming up on her to say, you know, you didn't do this correctly. You know, but when you have such a high level position as that finance director, it's such a skill set that that should be discussed with your city council. Even though I personally would like less tape, because at the end of the day, the most qualified person to make that decision is your city manager, just based off knowing what the work has performed. I disagree. Um, okay. I think it's the vice mayor. You think it's the vice mayor? You were about no. to be mad. Well, no, I was just like, I was just like, well, why do you think was that? Like, I was going to ask why. Okay. Did you hear that? You know I'm going to ask why. He I'm was like, why did you vote that way? Why did you vote that way? I'm going to ask why. I'm like, why did you say that? Why you? I mean, but it's the truth. It's just like, but it should be, your law director's there just because it's a, he's appointed. I mean, it's, yeah. that's, that's a high level position as well, even though he reports directly to me. Those are your two key positions in your city. You know, your top three, your city manager, your law director, and your finance director. That is nothing against anyone else that's high level in the administration. That's just how it is, no matter what city you're at. Shouldn't, Those three positions are shouldn't the, crucial. Shouldn't we also so, add the service director in there? Because that's a pretty key position, mm, too, isn't it? No I, don't, no, I don't agree with that at all. You don't agree with no, that? No, that's not even on the same level. It's not critical. It's not the same. It's nothing against that person in that position, but it's not a critical function. It's not vital. Like, because yeah. Dave Coleman could do Howie's job if he would be. Yeah, yeah, but he's also the water and sewer, right? But we have well, that's that, that's why we have the service. He's a service director. We have superintendents for that. Howie doesn't manage the Okay, okay, that, okay. You know, yeah. I thought he was quite. He had certs and all that stuff too. Well, I, I don't think he has many, but most of his guys, like your water, wastewater treatment yeah. plant the superintendent, yeah. she calls the shots. Okay. Because she legally has to. Mm -hmm. Water plant, Mr. Hoke, he's legally responsible for that okay. plant. You know? Um, so, again, nothing against that position, but most, if not all cities, are like that. I so. was thinking that the reason I said that because I thought he had the search and was making all these decisions. Mm -mm. And I realized, I, I remember we had superintendents. Yes. And they have to be certified also. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure who was calling the shots. That's why I asked. For sure. Now they did. They do add commentary, and I kind of like this because I think that was a request to council. The commentary is there to kind of help further explain what that particular section meant. So all that would have to be voted in. So anything that you see in the commentary, and I think they did it section by section. Um, I did not see any commentary under the city manager section, nor did I see any notes off to the side. So I invite you guys to go back to your email because I did request to them. I don't want to see those comments. I don't need to see them. Um, just in case they wanted to be open and honest, I didn't. What are you referring to? You're on the city manager section, the five point, the five section. Yeah. If you look at it, they didn't supply any notes or any kind of commentary on that section. Oh. So they okay. may have sent that to you guys privately without, because I asked not to see it. <coughs> so I wanted them to be able to. I don't think so. Okay. Just look and see if there is, and then we'll have to revisit that. that. Be like what? Two years ago. You know. So let me see what else we got. I think that's it. I don't know what the commentary is. Let me read that. So you were good with the, while well, you were looking at common. Yeah, I do want to get into the place. I don't know if we come to it yet. Where it's, oh, it's under, it's next. It's financial procedures. Okay. Yeah, other than that, this, I'm fine with what's over on Okay, there. so the 701. Okay, we're on 701. Okay, so this is our financial procedures. This is what, um, how I guide Colleen and her job with, with, with when we got to do certain stuff. And this is just a small smidget of it. Um, let me see if this is where it's at. It might be under budget. It is 7.05, so well, I guess see if we have any issues prior to that. That should provide complete financial plan. And that looks good. Three and four. And now that we have this in here, you're going to get budget presentations from me every year. So when you actually go to approve that budget, I'm going to get there and give basically a report and a, a PDF presentation on that budget. We're not going to go line item to line item. It's like a five to ten minute pre uh, presentation about the programs, where it's going. Usually you'll see that in a budget message. Um, so years in the past, we just kind of made our budget um, just this Excel sheet. And, you know, that's just really what it is. 
Um, so we can make that an actual binded document that we can present. So we're going to be working on that just to beef up our budget game. Okay. So you're good with 704? I'm good with all of them except 705. What's wrong with 705? So here's the issue with 705, and the council is going to immediately understand this. So when you see that A, it says five-year capital program unless three months prior to the final date of submission of the budget. That puts a city of our size in a bind because we don't carry over a lot of carryover balances. We are working up to that. But it is nearly impossible for us to sit there and say three months prior to the budget, our budget's looking so good and we know how the year is going to close that we can't afford all this stuff. What we end up having to do is just plug it in there and see if it sticks. And then we have to amend the, the CIP 90 million times because the budget can't support it. Mm -hmm. So upon talking to Colleen about this, we would like to be able to do the capital and the budget at the same time if needed. That way we have all the numbers there, you know? Um, it just puts us in a bind with what we got to do. Ultimately, it's council's decision. Um, we are getting to a point that it is getting better because we are doing these carry carryover balances. Um, and we would probably continue on doing it a little early, early but for that three month, according to stick to the charter, because if it says it in the charter, we have to. So you want to get rid of the three months? I'm not saying I want to get rid of it. So you want to stop at capital program, period, and delete the rest of it? No, no, not at all. I think that there should be a capital program in here. I just want to look at the timing requirements that we have to do. But doesn't it already? It, it's already, it says council. I'm talking about the manager shall prepare and submit the count to council a five-year capital program, period. And then it says at least three months prior to the final date of submission of the budget. So from capital program, the five-year capital program, you put a period there and delete the rest of that line. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, something like the same. It was prepare and submit the council a five-year capital program in conjunction with the operating budget. Because it's already in the original one. It's in the original what? The original church. About the five-year budget. The three and five years. Yeah, we know we want to get rid of the... Oh, it's, not about the it's not about the five-year capital program. It's just when we have to submit it to council before we look at the operating about budget. Three months. About the three months. We should oh, always okay. do a five-year projection the best we can. But I don't want to have to sit there and do the capital program three months before so we scratch the, the three months. budget. We just want to do it at the same time. Yeah. To get rid of the While we're doing talking about the budget, we want to talk, <coughs> we want to talk, about, talk and develop that capital improvement plan. Because what, again, what happens is we'll sit there and put, yeah, this is what we want. We think the year's going to cl close out from this. Do you remember that, like, last year or the year before we amended our CIP probably yeah. nine times? Bunch. It was because of the, as the year progressed, the budget was couldn't afford it. That's it. So we're just looking to streamline the process. So five-year capital program in conjunction with the budget. And around the same time as the operating budget. Or you just leave it at that, and you just must submit a capital. I would just put a period there and delete the rest just, of it. Yeah, just you, you, you pretty much do that anyways. Yeah. Is he not? So just put or, it. or put with or with the or, or with the uh, operating budget. So I think you should have something to bind it. Yeah. Does that make sense? So. Program. Does with. anybody know why they originally had the three month prior in there? It's for, it, it is. It's for planning. I'm not saying it's not for that. But so let's say that on our general fund, we're carrying over 18 million a year. You know, or we're in our water department. Prime example, same water department, we're carrying over two, three million dollars a year. We can go through that, we can go through the CIP, give it to you guys three months early, be like, all right, we need this, this, and this. You know, say those expenditures are 525,000. We know because we have a carryover that we'll be able to fix it in there. But we're not there yet because we only carry over two, three, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Now that loan payment is going to fall off in 2026, and that's mm -hmm. going to about double it. We have to do some rate increases. It's so it will get there eventually at some point in time. Right now, we just I, there's not been one budget cycle since I've been here that we've been able to stick with the CIP plan. It's yeah. always been amended. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm on a kick this year to reduce rate waste because there's a lot of repetitiveness and waste that we can get through to make the streamline the processes, and that's just it. And we would never take it away because council needs to know what capital improvements we need to do. You know, I like, um, what, I like what Dale says. Just you know. The council with a five-year capital program in conjunction with blah, blah, blah. just with the budget or with the budget what does in conjunction mean so i'm trying to put a lawyer in hat on conjunction does that mean with with, it, with or with we're in a timely budget. manner whatever you want to put yeah i was gonna say with five-year capital submit, program with the city manager submit capital five-year capital program with okay. the operating budget, with okay. the annual operating yeah. budget. 
Very that good. way you yeah. know when the operating budget comes in, that capital improvement has to be there. Yeah. Like that. There you go. With Do you have any other problems with 7.05 then? No. Mm -hmm. no six, seven point oh six. No, seven point oh six. Mm -mm. So it looks like they add some more stuff on their prohibition. Time, place, and time. Uh, they may have added the capital talking. improvement reserve fund, but we already have some of those in place. Like a certain amount of our tap and fees go to capital improvements. Um, some cities, their general fund just takes care of all capital improvements or all departments citywide. We, we need to back up from that, guys. The 7.05 D and E, they're saying that they don't want any cemeteries inside the city limits, wouldn't that one inside the city limits that we have? Pardon me? What are you Thought talking about? Cemeteries? Hold on, let me see this real quick. Let me make sure it's not in here already. The December prohibitations? Prohibitions? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, we got a cemetery inside the city limits now. When was that annexed? The original one. Yeah, that's it says as of March 1, 2002. There shall be no cemeteries placed within the present corporation limits of the city of New Carolina or such corporation limits in, existed as of March of 02. Why would you not want a cemetery in the city limits? So it's, it's say, the way it, I'm reading it, it says no more new ones. Yeah, it, the current one reads the same thing. It's not changing anything. We're not changing anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, do we need to add? But they're saying it's, it's amended on, on on March 20, 2022. So, well, they don't have the power to amend. Well, I know amend. that. But I mean, that's what they wrote here. So they've made some change. That because I don't have a old one with me. No, they and didn't the make any change. They right? made a change in it too because it's in parentheses. Why would you not want a cemetery in the city of? The way I read it, they're saying they don't want any new, which, I mean, I guess you can argue that part too, but they don't want any new cemeteries. I mean, you obviously can't get rid of the term. Well, well, because because they're not voter approval. So it could happen with the voter approval. Because they don't make money. Right. Which we all. We, we, su we supplement that cemetery every year. Yeah, we talked about that a few months back, yeah. and we wanted to get rid of it. It is, and it's a bear to get rid of it. Once you have, that's another thing too, Mr. Grimm, once you have them to get rid of them, it's a nightmare. Um, so. They're complicated. Um, they're also really, depending on how they're laid out, like our old section over here is a nightmare because you can't, if they're not laid, laid out straight versus our newer section, it's more organized and laid out. Um, but cemeteries are just, they're tough, they're tough. We have a perpetual care fund we have to do every year. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulations with it. You know, but they're not really fiscal money makers by any means. It's because it's a lot of maintenance. We put a lot of man hours into that cemetery before Memorial Day. That last year, our park suffered because we didn't have enough manpower. We had to pull off to go get the cemetery ready. Now we hired more people this year, but it's 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 tough. So so D and E is is the same as it is in the older. No. Okay, let's move on then. They, they I seen the, the italics, and I thought they had changed something. That's why I was wondering. No, that's the same one. Yeah, it is. Okay. That throws you off. I don't know why they italicized okay. it wasn't changing in there. So you was talking about council action on capital programs? That we've already done that. Mm -hmm. Well, are you... If the church wanted to set up a Catholic cemetery, they wouldn't be able to. Come again? If the Catholic church wanted to set up a Catholic cemetery, they wouldn't be able to. I mean, on their property? Somewhere in the city. Well, that be voter approved. If, be the voters approved. would have to approve it. I mean, if, if the voters said yes, then they could. But we wouldn't be able to say yes or no on it. The, the community would have to vote on it. It'd be a ballot issue. <sighs> They'd have to vote on it. I ain't got to take that part out. Well, I, think, I think the vote, it should, people should be able to vote on stuff like that. Now, if they have, if they have, vacant land that is zoned as a cemetery, then I wouldn't have a problem with doing it. 
And I don't know that they have that anywhere. It's so stigmatized too. Like, I mean, we could be in there just because if I, I, maybe I don't want it next door to me, and I should have a say in that because of what it is. I don't know that that would come into play, Dale, because, I mean, this is talking about public property. The Catholic Church would be private property. No, it's blatantly citywide. It says, there shall be no cemeteries placed within the present corporation. Yeah, and I think that covers pretty much everything. I guess that would cover everything. Yeah. That would include if you want to put a cemetery in your property. What about a pet cemetery? Ew. (laughs) If you want to bury your family there. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, mm-hmm. you want me to have Jake look into that just in case it's in there for a reason? <clears throat> Council? Yeah, probably be good. To, yeah, I think. I mean, sure. Okay. Is this in here for a reason? Because if, if Bill didn't want, uh, Cook didn't want a cemetery next to his house, and we all had to vote on it, and none of us lived near it, we could all go down and out, out vote. Right. No, it made it in there for some reason, so it. That's what we should look at. We had this situation come up down there on Madison Street. Oh yeah, they wanted the cemetery. Been there? there. Who was cemetery? What a small cemetery. Who who wanted to do that? I forget who it was. It was before we were on council. Mm. Uh-huh. I yeah. don't remember yeah. when this came up. That one was. Okay. Was it before eighty one? No, it was in the 90s or early 2000s. That would be 98 or 2002. Because this was adopted June 2nd. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. They were, people back there were P.O.'d. Maybe that's why it's in there then. We'll still have Jake look at it, make sure it's not some statutory requirement by the ORC. It it got the neighbors up. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I know. When I, in 15, we changed the zoning over there, and they were, they showed out in full force. I remember that. Okay, so I got it here. We'll, we'll ask Jake. Is, there, I, is, right. is this in here for a reason? Seven or seven. And that's Did all. Did we fine. do seven or six? Because we never got off to some terries. Do what? Yeah, he's going to have Jake look at it. Oh, okay. Come back to it. Seven or six is fine. You're going to do that anyway. You'll yeah. we'll just vote on it at the same time you vote on the operating budget. You mean 707? 70, it's 706 here. It might be 707 on there. Yeah, we, I'm not we, looking on the chart. They added 706. It's Council Action on Capital Items. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. But, but I think both of them is fine. Mm-hmm. Along with 708. Council Action on Budget is fine, too. Yeah. Let's back up to 706. 706. So there not be something in there that it could be used as our social programs as of now. For notification oh yeah yeah i remember we talked about that adding a different form of media oh we can't do that that's all prescribed by state law is it yeah state, even with state. the even with changing times i mean well if you want to change the time of your meeting no changing times is in like new technology new technology oh yeah the state mandates you're you're, you're no, sure i'm very positive yeah yeah state mandates that they wanted to change it with the newspaper association budget really yeah so i will say that i just on there how we get municipal league notifications all the time so they did just introduce and it's very early stages for us to be able to use social media for legal advertisements or put it on our own web page or our own facebook page or our twitter page um so they are taking technology account but right now it's not it so we could not make our own rules about covid about meeting meeting on zoom that was all state of Ohio. oh yeah you yeah. know so the same thing well the state uh, did kind of con- uh, concede a little bit the newspapers have to put it on a state website mm. a state uh, we pay a lot of money to legal advertising boy i made money off legal. yeah but you were the, by far the cheapest and we appreciated you for that because you saved us a lot of money they should jack that price up, Bill. No, he does a great service. And we well, a lot of times there's a difference between making a profit that week and not making a profit that week. Right. All right. Would you say 708? Well, what, let's read it by title. 70, what is it? like? Public uh, record, 708. Oh, we, okay. That's, you, got, you can. Mm, 709 amendments after adoption. That's fine. I, yeah, that's, yeah, that's you guys. Emergency. I don't ever see that administration of budget. So 
Section 7.10, lapse of appropriations, does not have any amendment dates on it. Is it doesn't that, even have it online either. Hang on. Is that something new? No, it's in the old one. And it, and no it, amendment date there? Nope. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they. Right. And I don't looks, see they, one. looks like they just copied it straight over. So it's the same. Does anybody have anything on 710, Randy? Good. 711, administration of budgets. 711? Yeah. Oh. 711, administration of budget. Uh, a needs to stay. That's how we build our budget process up. A needs what? A just needs to stay, not change. As is. We do that every year. Payment obligations prohibited. Are you looking over something, Randy? Mm -hmm. did, did B change any at all, Mike? B payments and obligations? Yeah. Because they, they changed to have a date down there where they kind of indicate something has changed, but. Um, no, it looks the same because they left the original date of 1998 and then just. Yeah, I'm good with you got, you guys still, Where you at? You still on um, uh, 7-11. B. Yeah, I'm good with A. Uh, B. Oh, that just says how they pay against what programs. I'm good with that, too. I don't think they change anything. I don't see anything. Okay. 801. Planning. Planning director. There shall be a planning director, there shall be a planning by St. Andrews. They just shortened it. They went from, there was, there was A, B, C, D, E, and F. And now it's just A, B, C. <coughs> D, E, and F, say. Um, D, to participate in the participation. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, D, to participate in the participation and revision of the capital program provided in Section 7.05. E, to advise the planning board and the exercise of its responsibilities in connection therewith to provide necessary staff assistance and F, to coordinate the planning activities of the city with the planning operations of the county. It looks like they just separated. They just that. separated. That's an 802 down. now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So section, one thing did stick out to me, <coughs> and that is on under 801, the last thing above March, is this council has the final say in determining that the qualifications are met. Um, I'd like to reword that. With? Because um, you guys approved certain positions through ordinances. Um, I think that qualifications, correct me if I'm wrong, should fall with him. He's the one that does the interviewing and stuff with them. He and then you guys get to that ordinance. person to us. That's what you're getting at. That you, you're getting at? That you They're already at. filtered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to so, submit anyone that's not qualified. Because when I read that, I thought, I don't remember council ever checking anybody's qualifications before we hire them. Right. That, because the manager always did, whether it's him or somebody else. I agree. So I think that whole line of council should have the final say in determining if the qualifications are met, that whole line should be struck. Right. I think there's something in there too, because we have to take into account, it's hard for us to get someone with at least five years experience at this level, at this size of city. Well, you just want to change you know, it to... Um, so when we put it out, I mean, that's what I 
a, the job posting always says at least three to five years experience. Um, very rarely do we get that just because of the pay that we pay. Um, let me see, because the combination well, of experience. Once you change it to five years of experience is recommended, but, or, you know, it's recommended, but not, so you're locked into it. Yeah, and is it discretionary? Well, right, <laughs> and, is, and is that the discretion? They don't the, have to have five years of experience. Yeah. Above it says at least one. Yeah. On, on one D, of it says five years of experience in city planning or government. It says oh, at least one of the following. I didn't at catch least that. one yeah. of the yeah. okay. following. Okay, that makes me feel better. So yeah. if he had a combination of experience in planning and college training and planning, oh, okay. or if he had right. a degree. He's well, it says job. graduate degree. That's only 12% of your population has graduate degrees. So it cannot just be a bachelor degree. It should be a degree, a degreed position, just because there's are, there are theories and principles and practices that you need to know to be successful in this. Um, but it, then it goes down at the bottom too. I just don't want the minimum required to be a graduate degree. Well, I get a bachelor degree. I mean, I would- Because then they, and I don't even feel as though they need to have a bachelor degree. I think it's a rec good recommendation but let's just say someone has a two-year degree, they went to Sinclair for two years, and they've had relevant experience. And let's just say they internship somewhere. They're very versed that they can come in and do it, you know? Um, but I think that would fall under your combination. I just that want to make sure under, under that that person has been exposed to it, that they are able to, A, hold a conversation in that. And you'll see when I interview, I have my first one, we get through that stuff. But my last interview is just an informal interview. We're gonna go out to lunch. We're going to talk about that field, and I want to know if you know the language. Each profession has, has a language. The baking industry has a language. Um, the fire department has a language. Every profession has its language. That's through your acronyms. That's through the, the basic skill sets. In this particular place, it's placemaking. If you can't tell me what placemaking is and you're trying to be a planner, that's a massive red flag. You know. So we figure this stuff out through that interview process. We, we truly do. And I think most of the people you interview are going to fall under seat. A combination, of, yes, that's what I want to read to make sure it reads correctly, because I think that's your catch-all. And I would like to see graduate degree at least to be bachelor. I don't... Well, how about just the degree in planning? That could be a, that could be a two-year degree. That could be any degree. That could be from Sinclair, which would be, what, an associate's degree. Well, I'm thinking about this a little bit more. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know... Uh, because St. Clair's only a two-year college. The only thing you can get there is an associate's degree. Well, they don't really have a lot of two-year degrees in planning. That's very really rare. Well, but then normally after that, they would go to like Wright State or UD to a, to a four-year college to get at least a bachelor's. I think bachelor's should be minimum. Well, that's, that's what I, I said. But Combination of experience <laughs> in planning and college training and planning or related professional field. Combination of experience in planning and college training. Yeah, if, I mean, if council is willing to just do bachelor instead of graduate, I think the rest of it sticks. Bachelor? Would I be out of line well, see, asking what your qualifications were when you were hired as planning director? I don't, I don't know what Ken had, but when I came here, I had a bachelor and two master's degrees. And I had a year worth of internships. Okay. You think a bachelor? So you fell in the seat. So, so what do you think making that from a graduate to a bachelor's But my grad, my bachelor, my undergrad degree was in poli sci with a pre-law track. I was going to be an attorney. It wasn't until the last minute I decided not to go to law school. Thank God. Because <laughs> you'd been terrible, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> OJ would have went family. to jail. <laughs> I would have took that on. <laughs> OJ would have went to jail. I would have not been a criminal defense attorney. Let's establish right then and there. I'd have been a corporate attorney. That's where the money's at. <laughs> So you yeah. get with a bachelor's degree then instead of graduate? Yeah, it needs to have some sort of de degree. Um, because let's just say someone someone can be in a program. Someone can be in their fourth year and not have that degree, but then they have then, then they could follow the C. So I think if we have that C catch all, we change A to minimum bachelor, we're good. Okay, change a graduate to bachelor if council agrees. Mm -hmm. You're good, you good with that? I guess everybody's good, Mike. Okay, I'm good. You're here. Duties of planning director, all oh, that's fine. Okay. Then we're striking out cancer council should have the final say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're count we yeah, we struck that out. Right. right. Struck, yeah, that, that whole out. line goes because you Just, that that's your domain. I'm making sure we are scratching out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Kind of reiterate 
it anyway. I mean, at the top. Or well, hold on. Let me let me think about this. I'll we'll be very account. honest with you, because now moving out, it says that administrative department heads are only approved by you guys. That's your finance director and your public service director. Your planning director is not administrative head in the city. So if you guys want that, if you guys want an ordinance to approve that higher, well, you know what you have to do anyway. Because you guys have to set the you guys have to set the initial you have to set the initial compensation. And you and you always brought planning to us anyways to Well hold on, that's what I want to read, because I think that's what me and Jake were talking about. So let me bring that up. The initial compensation. Where is that at in the charter? Under emergency action requirement. Eight oh three. Eight no, it's under um, action requirement ordinance. So that would be why is my phone frozen? Action requirement ordinance. Ordinances and legislations. Ordinance and resolutions in general. Four point one four. Let me see. Start here. Procedure. Public. Uh, I can bring it. Would you? Get it. I printed one out. I can't read it. I guess he likes me better. Four point one three. He's in trouble. Man. Why would I do? You brought him a root beer, not me. I didn't bring him a root beer. No, he brought me this. I'm talking about this. Oh. <laughs> Age. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So right now, G says fixed compensation of all elected city officials, administrative department heads, or city manager. So your administrative department heads are located in your charter, and that is your service director. You all look like a blur and a um, service director and your finance director. So right now, your planning director would not come to you for raises. It would be solely mine and solely for the hiring. And I'm okay with that because it's not administrative department. Because mm -hmm. moving forward, like when you guys voted on Vicki, the tax administrator, she's not an administrative department head. Mm -hmm. So that will be internal based off her review. So again, you guys will only be doing raises here on out for your city manager, finance director, and your service director. The rest of them fall under us. Now, you can change that through your, your administrative power here, but I don't recommend that. I think we should vote on all raises for administrative. For administrative. Well, if you're going to dilute my power, then we're going to have, some, we're going to, have to talk about that too. Because that's what you essentially well, you would be doing. We would still, you would still recommend what you, because you did that last time. But I think it's, I think it is, we're completely repetitive to come to you guys for a minute for raises for all your, for your, for your, for all your managers. One, you'll go, you're going to talk about that in your operating budget. Like I said, I have no problem bringing me, because that makes sense. For your finance director, that makes sense, kind of. Um, and your service director. But other than that, they're not really high level employees. But when, let's say you're bringing someone completely new in, like Vicki Leaves or whatever, the tax administrator, is that something that, mm -mm. no? It's not an administrative department head. So the only moving forward. No, not no, not mm -hmm. the, not that we would make a decision, but if you're filling Vicki's spot and you come and say, hey, I found somebody I'm thinking about bringing in, you guys, I mean. Would you even consult us on it or you just do it? That's, that's the part of running the being a city manager. Okay. Well, I did say I thought we should have council should vote on all administrative raises, and that would be you, Howie, Colin, and, and, and that's it. And that's it, because that's the three administrators. So, so that, that would leave so the planning director. So my statement was correct. Yes. And you misread. It. I'm sorry. Well, what would be? And I'm just thinking out of the box here of other scenarios. Let's say I'm not saying this is a problem, but let's just say you have got a buddy who you want to hire, and you're like, oh yeah, I'll bring you in it. What well, I'm saying should we we should we protect that somehow? Um, I mean, you can, but how? Why is that any different than hiring someone at the street level or hiring someone else? Well, you um, can't because the street level it's all union. Street level. Well, and yeah, it's still in a guideline, but unless I bring in someone with no experience, but yeah, I'm gonna give them the highest the highest step. You know, so there's still discretion, and you have to have your manager to allow to make that discretion. You know, I mean, do you think the the, the the vice president, the president of J.P. Morgan Chase, goes to his board with every hire he has? No. And that's that's the former government we have, and that's something politely we need to start talking about is getting back to the former government that we are prescribed at. That is a strong mayor form, a strong manager form of government. So when you look at your action that required an ordinances, other than that, I shouldn't have to come to you guys. You know, because no, that's I, a, I understand. Yeah. I just so it's it's, it's about giving that. Given your manager that authority to But do how would you fix that to again? I mean, my, I, I agree with what you're mm -hmm. saying that you should be able to just give them whatever it is you're thinking. But what would be the, what would be the, what would be our option if 
city manager gave so and so a big old fat raise because I, and I'm not saying then you bring it in this you bring your city manager and you have a talk with them. You rip it. Yeah. And that's what yeah. you do. You go into executive session executive and session. you like, yeah. what is this about? Okay. I'm good. See I'm saying that is Yeah, I'm good. I just I just had to yep. see it. Sure, sure. So sure. then we're taking out with the approval of council as provided in section six point oh one. Yes. Where's that where's that at? Eight point oh one. Yes. That's section C, record. right at the end of section C it says council should have the final say in determining the qualifications qualifications are met. That whole line goes away. Eight oh one C. The last sentence. On the new one. No, eight oh one. The first sentence uh, shall be a planning director oh. who shall be appointed by the city manager with the approval oh. of council as provided in section 6.01. Yeah, because under six uh, under six under the 600 sections, Department of Law, Department of Public Safety, Department of Public Service, Director of Finance. That is it. So yeah, that would have to be, and that's a very good catch. I didn't catch that, so that would have to be striked. So then we take to end it with city manager. Um. Yes. Cool. And it's also after C of 801. Good job, Dale. That was a great question, Dale. So, so back to the conversation about what you was talking about, Mike. Uh, should we have something in here that, and, and this has nothing to do with Randy because he does a good job at keeping us informed. Sure. But for in the future, because this is going to be if this passes, it's going to be set in stone for at least eight to ten years. Yeah. So should we have something in there that requires the city manager to give us a some type of report on people he has hired or has fired well, we that, that we don't that we don't have to approve? You know, there's only three, no. two others that we have to approve. If I fire your planning director, we're you're going to know, you're right? know about it. Well, yeah. I mean, I understand that, mm -hmm. because that's you. But the next guy, the next manager, I may not, I don't know to you. You know, here, I mean, I, you know, here's the deal. Like, I can't speak for any other manager. I, I can't, I don't know who's going to be in these shoes next. I don't, you know, and you don't know what personality you're going to get. You just don't know. Um, but. Right. I got a semi driving through my kidney. Oh. There is a reason why it's, set up the way it is um, and that's just so your manager can run a very smooth op smooth operating machine I'm good with 801 so I'm trying to defend it and I just don't know if I can other than saying well we're allowed to ask our city manager questions so. absolutely you can always ask so if we pulled you into an executive session did you fire the, the, the planning director and you said no well, clearly everybody in the city has been saying he's gone and then, oh, that then you should terminate your city manager. Right. Why does he fire the time. janitor and we like them? You know, it could be like, hey, you know, hey, you know, a council meeting. Let's go into executive session. We've got a personnel issue. Yeah. Talk to you about that. Hey, I heard you. Uh, what's going on with the planning director? What happened? Yeah. You're allowed to ask those questions all day long. Yeah. Okay. You know. So. Hey, you know what? I'm trying to think of an example that it hasn't happened. Um, hey, you're. You're, um, yeah, you're, yeah, you say, so now we're in executive stuff, and you guys ask me why I terminated that planning director. Um, he was late every day. You know, something basic as that, you know, or he was um, um, leaving every day at 3.30 and not putting it on his time card, you know, or he, um, at the end of the day, we're using executive session as a tool to figure that stuff out. For sure, that's exactly okay. yeah, and I don't want to go on it. Right. So yeah, just well, because of scratch what I said, yeah, let's move on. Move on. I'm good with 801 the way we've changed it. Okay. Yes. And I'll summarize all this stuff so you guys can have that so we can, before we do anything final, you'll have all yeah. this summarized. I already started it. It's a lot of work. Uh, the duties of the planning director, yeah, 802. Uh, duties of planning director, um, I think we're, that we already passed that. 802 is where we're at. We just left 801. No, I was, I'm already on 802. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, oh, yeah, that needs to be struck out of 802. With the approval, approval of council. Yeah. Yep. 6.01. I'm going to put city manager in front of manager there, but to clarify that, and then period, and strike the rest. Is that okay? Sure. So the city cool. planning department headed by director who shall be appointed by the city manager. Okay. Um, no, that's exactly what they're supposed to do. Okay. 
planning board if you're there. Two or three. There is nothing wrong with any of that. I am checking all these numbers, so when you see like as section 8.04, 8.05, I am noting myself to check those. So in the final summary, if they had moved something, it might say 8.03 8 instead of 8.04. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm checking all these numbers too as we go along, or well, I will later on. Yeah, I'm good with 8.03. There's commentary down here. Additional information. So we would have to add both that in. Does council want that in? Which part? The commentary. Yeah. I would. You want all commentary voted in, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Comprehensive plan 804. I think the only thing that should be in here is a time frame. Is it what? One of the most un, un improved or amended documents are comp plans. Some cities they set on the shelf for 20 years. And you, in today's age, how fast we change, 20 years is outdated data. Ours was do, last done in 2012. It is kind of a bigger undertake, undertaking. Um, and maybe council would entertain like at least every 10 to 15 years, the council hires or, or, or updates that comp plan. Um, we, last time we did it was in house 2012. Um, I wasn't here yet. So it's a very basic document. It is. That is the document that you guys should have on you and you should vote based off what that comp plan says. Um, because that's basically is how I do my job with your planning and zoning. So when I went after all these developments, it blatantly says in the comp plan to do just that. You know, doesn't say anything about not annexing, doesn't say anything about crossing that. It just says you go after our cards. That's how you grow your city. So that's why we were aggressive once we had the means to do so. Um, so that comp plan, I know I sent it out to uh, Mr. Graham, I think late last week. Um, did I send it all to council too? I didn't. I'll send you guys that. Take a look at it. But that's it back when we were doing that Bethel. Bethel thing, you guys got a copy of it too? Okay. So that's something you might want to look at. Um, sometimes it it's, doesn't hurt to put a timing in there, you know, just so it's done. So I know we had changed the coding. We had in the earlier session we had with this, the, average, the codification updates, it was only required at once every 10 years. So we changed it to every two. Well, at least every two years because with technology improvement since maybe 1998 how, it e how easy it is to get so that's my only recommendation with that everything else looks good the content the act adoption the effective period all that that is but you might want to look at almost string a pigeonhole in your administration into saying hey at least every 10 to 15 years we as a group need to look at this so you want to you want a time frame in here so you think 10 years is sufficient for council i would say 10 Okay. Well, if you, if you say 10 to 15, you're almost back to 20, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what you were just saying. That well, just say at least every 10 years, it, council revisits the document. And the moves okay. forward accordingly. Yeah, 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 you may admit it, you may not. Just it's, it's every, every least. It's looked at every 10 years and is, is um, yeah. Is that too much for someone? Do you guys want to do every seven years that you just look at it? Since well, it's not a requirement to change it, but at least review it. Or is that something you want to look at every five years? Mm -hmm. I, I five years isn't a lot of time. No, it's not. It doesn't give. A, I mean, once you're starting on a project, you know, that may. I mean, you figure it's going to take these houses a few years to go up. The total project would be done about ten years. By the end of the week. You know, <laughs> so you guys can leave it as is too. Like I said, it's something that council can bring up at any time, saying, "Hey, let's take a look at our comp plan." Just putting a number in there, just it. <clears throat> I'll put it on my calendar. It says every 10 years you got to do this. I think every 10 years we should look at it, but also I'm counsel on it because surely we wouldn't be here in 10 years. Uh, should look at it, but also 
the, at the discretion of counsel and or the manager, because it may need some changes at some point, that if the manager can bring them changes to counsel. Well, it can always be done sooner, it just can't, it has to be done at least within that time frame. So it can be done sooner, but it has oh, to be Oh yeah, at least I mean, if there's something okay. changing on her, like it's holding back, <laughs> we're gonna look at it and make recommendations. Okay. So I think 10 nice. years would be, a, would be a good number. Ben, Dale? I think it'd be better than 15. Yeah, 15's a long time. Yeah, 15's, 15's a long time. And 10. Yeah, some type of verbiage that, you know, would give you the ability to look at it sooner, but well, at a minimum every 10 years. To I, I think we can look at any of the documents that has time time period. At any time. At any time. And that's but no more, no, no, no longer than, no 10, longer years than 10, 10 years, but it can be any time soon. Yeah. 10 years. Okay. So, I mean, uh, are you good with that, with that uh, language? Mm -hmm. Or do you want something there that says, but can also, be, which I mean, he already said, but do you want, yeah. it, you want it in there that says that we can visit um, so anytime, anytime visit as needed? But yeah. at a minimum of every 10. 10 years. You got that, Mr. Bird? Something. Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to figure out where we're going to put it in here at. You can do that tomorrow at the office, right? Mm -mm. My day's already booked tomorrow. You told me earlier you didn't have a thing on the schedule the rest of the week. You I did not tell you that. You need to clean them ears out. Well, I got a Q-tip. You need one? You talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> um, would, it be it would it be under adoption? Would it would be under content. Like, do we create a whole new think. section and do, like, make content B and be like, would A would be at least every... Hold on. Let's look at adding at the end. So just put it under the content a, at the B, end C. of it, say that it has to be looked at or reviewed at least every 10 years. I think it'd be better sooner. if we just add a D section. That way it's not mixed in with content. It's not mixed in with adoption. We have the effect period on it. And we'll just go to D. Council right. shall review this at least once every 10 years. Is that what you guys said? Yes. Or sooner, yes. Or sooner. Yes. Or as? Or as needed. Or as needed, needed. yeah. Okay, so let's All right, that. Yeah. Or as needed. Okay. That's D. going in as D. 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 We're adding a new section. section. So D. that would be. D is it dog? Yes. D is it dog. What would I title that? Timelines. Time frame, timeline. Time line, time line. Mm. Frequency. Mm. Yeah. Any of the above. Revisiting. Revision. Execution. Revision. Yes. Revising. You're making it too complicated. I really? Just put problem. time. Just put so time picture time. of a clock and the same. Effective period. Effective. See? No, it's already under effect. Just put timeline. Time frame, time line. Yeah. I'll think of something. It must be every 10 years or soon. As I'm going to put timeline question mark, and when I summarize everything, you guys will have a thing and you tell me, yeah, you like it, and no, you don't. So, council, because I know Jake. Jake's going to be like, what is timeline? Exactly, that's what I ask myself. What is the time? Well, oh, Jake, that's what council decided to call it. So council shout out. shall. All right. Space time continuum. <laughs> Do what? Yeah. Council. So, what do we say? Council shall review the comprehensive ten plan years, plan or as within ten plan years, or as every needed. ten years, or as needed, or as needed. No, hold on. Every ten years, within ten years, or no later than ten years, or no, no. Well, you just contradicted yourself by yeah, no. 10 years or when needed. So but 10 years or soon. At, okay, so council shall review the comprehend as needed in no case, no more than 10 more years. No, and no. Review. Out of order. Let Jake figure it out. Council shall review, review the plan as needed. What does the. Uh, but in no case shall that exceed 10 years. There you go. What does the council review session, section say? It doesn't have one. It just says adoption, content, and effects. Oh, that's there you go. There's your heading. Council review. Council review timeline. Sure. Thank you, Dale. Does that make sense? Sure. At this, at this point, whatever. Planning review. Yeah, we can take time. Council review. Council review period. I'll take timeline out. Boom. I like that. Council shall review the comprehensive plan as needed, but in no case shall the review period exceed 10 years, but in, in no case shall the review period exceed 10 years. 
And of course, Jake will probably change every word on that, but we're good. <laughs> okay, let me mark that as something to do here. Okay. You guys want to set a hard time to stop? Are you doing okay? Yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. We're getting close. Yeah. Where are we at? Eight? We got six pages. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're right. good. So, eight of, where are we at? Implementation of the 805, I think. Plan. Okay. Okay. Now we got a whole other section here. Now I'm thinking that's it. No, we're keeping it that because there's already too much information in the radio five. I think they kept it. And I think they copied that from the other one, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, that's what it looks it's like. Probably the same. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with everything. Board of Appeals. Eight or six. Council rules. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. It is. Um, so, I'm at 806 Board of Appeals. That's what it says on the paper. I don't know what it is, Carl. Yeah, it's 806. Um, I think we should strike portion of B. Portion of B is what? Oh. Because you guys are now the BCA because we can't even volunteer. You want three? Is that what you're saying? No, it says the board of appeals from five members appointed by council and may hold no other city office. So you guys are BZA members. You hold two two offices. You owe you hold the well, council just, office and then you hold the position on BZA. So we pass resolution for that and the council proceeds, but we have no other person. Oh, I see. So, no other so we can volunteer. still move. So the city now the only option to yeah. that is have your planning board act as BZA, but so, that is so a massive they, conflict of kind of interest. So they put a period that for council and delete the rest of it. Correct? No. Add D. In, in the case of no volunteers, in case council. Of no volunteers, city council shall act as board as only. May. In the, in the case of lack of Appointees or volunteers? What sounds? Participants, volunteers. Volunteers or board members or members? Board members. Board members. Board members. Board members. All right, re, what did you say, Dale? In, 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 in the apps? With the, with the exception, or go ahead, you start it. I'm going to step on the camera. In case sufficient oh, volunteers cannot be secured. Cannot be secured. To meet. Part B, City Council shall act as BGA, Board of Appeals. So is that Section D then? Yeah. Okay. To meet the requirements of Section B, and that's good because it, it comes back to the members, number of members. So in case of fish volunteers of cancer cured, to meet the requirements of Section B, City Council shall act as the Board of Appeals. There are only five of them. Uh, got it. If there's five, then three would be a quorum. If there's three, yeah, I know. then two would be a quorum. No, I meant only five council members can, can act as the board of zoning because it says five members up okay. there. Forget it, Dale. It was a joke. <laughs> oh, you finally got it, right? I got it off of that. Okay, so Article 6 actually works in your guys' favor. The nominations and elections, because the Board of Elections calls for third, 90 days, but our charter gives you guys 60. Where are you at? I'm already on nomination. Article, Article 9, 9 nominations and elections. elections. The only thing I have with this section is the if, if somebody takes the time to get a petition, fill it out, Turn it in and pay the board and, and pay whatever the fee is now. Why do they need a thing from the city that says, oh yes, if I'm elected, I'll do the job? If they're elected, they're going to do the job. So the, the acceptance form letter, because it's written here somewhere, uh, I think that should be stricken away from it, stricken out. That's why I have it underlined on here. I have it on my paper. Oh, I don't, that didn't know that. It says the signature, is this what you're talking about? The signature of the candidate and a statement mm -hmm. indicating exactly. acceptance of the nomination, willingness to accept. 
Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, take that out. That's yeah. council. Yay, yeah, nay, gone. Yes. Yeah. Where is that? I don't even know if I understand it. What do you guys have to do? You have to write a letter? There, no, there's an acceptance it? form we have to fill. It's already typed up. It says, I, whoever, if I win, I will That's serve. Right. Basically is what it says. You have to sign it and date it. And so, turn it in with your petition. It's BS. So here's my, here's my <laughs> issue with this. And it's not really an issue. It's not an issue at all. Comment, I guess. If you look at when this was amended, November 98, November 2006, I wonder if that's a statutory requirement by the state law. So no, you it was me, not. You, no. Well, why would in the world anyone no, in 1998 or 2006 who knows? want to add that to the charter? And more importantly, why would the voters vote that in? I have so do you want me? Let, I should. I, do you want me to take a look at that? Well, what's it hurting to leave it in though? I, I don't know. It, it, I, I don't know. I don't run for offices. I have no idea how. I, 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 just think think, I think it's just a, a extra Redundancy. stuff that we have to do a new Carlisle. You know what? Have to do in the county or any place else in the county. It's only particular to New Carlisle. Let me see. So I, I don't see why it says it. it. You don't have to do it when you run for state office no. or county office or, or any place else. Or president. Or president. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. You know, so I, I just think it's, it, it should just go away because it, it serves no purpose as far as I can see. Does that go to the Board of Elections or where does that go? It goes to the Board of Elections and goes to the file somewhere. Some it, you know, mysterious, it, yeah. It, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything <laughs> except <laughs> for... Uh, if you go to the Board of Elections and pick up a packet for a new Carlisle, it's in that packet. It's in that. Right. Yeah. But that's extra work of the board. Well, wait a minute, because they have to print it. No, because what it's saying is, is that if. Yeah. I want to see if it's in other people's. Um, if it's in other people's charters. Well, good luck with that. Well, no, what they're it saying is. is, is it, well, okay. it might be, because if it is, then that's going to tell you it's a statutory requirement. It I just, it I just think it's weird that that's in it. It ain't. They so it had to been. It's had to been in the Board of Elections told me that's unique to New Carlisle. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's not. It's no place in New Carlisle. And, and what it says is a signature of the candidate and a statement indicating acceptance of the nomination and willingness to accept the office if elected shall appear on each copy of the petition. That's what I just read needs to go away because it pertains strictly to the acceptance of the, of the position. Right, so what? I just wonder if this should have had somebody's name next to it. But ran and then declined <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, no, that, you no, know and they, yeah. they put that in there but being serious i mean is that protecting <laughs> let's say let's say x amount of people run at the next meeting and someone else runs to just try to change the way the outcome is by running and then not then not filling the seat basically they're saying if you run you have to take that seat if, if yeah, you, you if run you, and win you need to you take have that. to take the seat but but running a campaign and doing what you have to do to win, you'd be an idiot not to take the seat. And, right. like, and like the Board of Elections says, it's only unique to New Car Lot. Well, I'll find out. But I could see. Well, I, I wonder if there's something like that. that they're, they're some strategic that they're, they're, somewhere yeah, that. That it's protect, like, <laughs> say, if you and Dale were running and somebody says, well, I don't like Mr. Vaughn, I'm going to run and throw his numbers off. And then if I get him, well, I'm not going to take the I seat. I'll just resign or whatever. Yeah. It just, and if they do, you know, even if they do take the seat, behind. any one of us seven can resign at any time. So that that statement means nothing. There's no law behind it, none whatsoever. Well, it's, it, all it does is cost the board of elections money to print these things and put them in packets for people to pick up. Well, the county wastes yeah. enough money. Well, they, they do do that. So no <laughs> argument there. Extra ten cents for that copy to put in the packet. As yep. far as that letter. How about yeah, you, they do, they do. Randy, how about this? Since me and Ben have thought, they have thought on it, why don't you just have Jake look at it and see what he thinks, regardless of the purpose behind it. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know. Give me a... So we're going to spend money on <laughs> it? Well, I mean... Cause, I mean... It, I'm curious. I, yeah, I mean... I'm looking at it right now. Hold on. Yeah, even if you sign that form... The signature, it doesn't keep you from you resigning are, later. You are installed in city council. You can resign you can the next say, day. Well, I resign. Yeah. That letter has no authority of law behind it. None whatsoever. 
Oh yeah, it's totally new. It's, it's only new for a while. No. So what I did, just so everyone knows. Oh. Hold on, let me advance filter yeah. stuff. They got sick. Or... But it, but even that doesn't matter because if once they are sworn in, and the next day they get sick terminally, and they go, like I said, any of us but, seven can but resign at but, any time. So the letter is is hold like on. I said earlier is BS. <laughs> no. Yeah. If they take the oath, if they, they if they win, they come up here and Emily reads and they're on, and then they get terminally ill, they have to leave. That's one thing. Well, they put it in quotation marks. But if they but if they win the election and then they say, "Ha, huh, I I cheated somebody." It's only new Carlisle. Huh? It's only new Carlisle. How do you know? Okay, so we have American Google Legal said. Publishing. <laughs> Do what? American Legal Publishing does our codes online. Yeah. So American Publ Publi American Legal Publishing. Yes, that one has all these Ohio cities. Yeah. All those Ohio cities they do. So you go into the search. You search that. Search filters, put parentheses in, and then take your search criteria off to leave the search to the whole database. And New Carlisle, out of all these cities, that's the only result it was. Exactly. New Carlisle. So, so it is unique, so it's not a stat. I still think it probably was. It, it has, it, it's somebody in history did something like, and they put that in there specifically, but it probably doesn't play a role anymore. But uh, I just. The history on that would be interesting. I, I can't yeah, there's a reason it's there. <laughs> yeah, I can't picture anybody running a campaign. But it's weird that it was in ninety. It was in ninety eight. Oh, I agree. It would be in, it would be stupid to yeah. spend all the time and energy. And, and if they are that stupid and they do that, you don't want them on council anyways. <laughs> scrap it. Yeah, scrapping. Yeah. Scrap, scrap it. it. Scrap it. It it's starts scrap. at the signature and it ends at the, each copy of petition. It's Basically three lines, but it's only one line and two partials. I am gonna. I'm gonna look into that. Though. I'm, I'm dying to know what it's about. So it should be. So the last one should be end in shall not use. Strike the next sentence, and it starts off with the, the, the petition, petition may be. Maybe a number of yeah. 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 Leave that part. Yeah, him, Lowell, yeah. So Jim, it's the, the Jim Collier, or whatever it is in between. Yeah, I was I'm curious. There's, I'm just. It, I mean, well, and, and there was probably so put so back in and. <laughs> I didn't get on the council. Yeah. They ran and cheated me, and then they quit. <laughs> and maybe it was put in there because somebody won that they didn't want to win, so they put it in there. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's got to be some history behind that. Yeah, and, there's a reason. And the people that, well, that would know were probably not here. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. All right, moving on. What else, Mr. Bridge? Where you at? I'm just reading the paragraph underneath it before we go on to 9.01. Oh, okay. Which I don't. I really don't care about your guys' nominations and how you all get on council. That's messed up. We care about your stuff. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I do care. Thank you. You're welcome. It just seems over it just complicated. Goes, you, said, you really don't care It's just about complicated this. to run for city, local government offices, so uh, it's just very confusing. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm under 901 city election, so. Yeah, that's all right. I'm probably okay with everything. Well, they're, 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 those are where the elections are held anyway, so. Commentary. Okay. Yeah, that commentary looks fine. It's just hey. kind of—it's kind of pointing out the obvious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had the second paragraph of nine point zero two highlighted yellow, and I have a note for why. Council shall by resolution or special election to be held within 60 it. days. Dale, is there any comments next to that one? No. Said consider consideration of this citizen resolution for a special election. Yeah. What does it say? Consider to delete it. So that, that's supposed to be deleted, the highlighted stuff? Consider deletion of this citizen resolution for a special election. You own 9.02? Mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't have that comment. Isn't that redundant? Is it? Can a citizen? Well, no, that's just, I'm thinking of appealing your guys' ordinance. So they have a 15-day period to do that. So this is separate than that. I don't know. I don't know what that means. This sounds like to me that if someone gives you a petition with that 
signature What's it say on to it? Do, consider deleting what? The citizen resolution for a special election. So if 500 people submit us a petition calling for a special election mm -hmm. to whatever, to keep, to keep uh, parking spaces on Main Street, mm -hmm. then we would have to submit it to a special election. So you want to delete that whole section? It was, that could be anything. Huh? That could be on anything. Yeah. Yeah. They just have to get 500. So they're suggesting delete that whole section is what you're saying? You know what? You can look at it a different way. So I think it's there because it gives their citizens a voice. Maybe yeah. look at increasing that 500. So yeah, the town's growing. Yeah, to, town's growing. To 500 is really not that hard to get. Well, and then, it, then, it, then it does go to the ballot and most of your registered voters will vote on it, I guess. So I guess that's another thing, too. It's a, I don't know. Just I'm with, not, I'm with not, all three not. developments, 1,500, I think, is reasonable once it all gets in. And those will be in in what? Maybe eight, three years? Eight years. A percentage, of, a percentage of the electors who voted in the last gubernatorial election. Well, that would be less than this. Because yeah, be the less. local local option we're doing now, yeah. we only have to have, well, they only have to have 193 signatures. Yeah. I, think, I like the theme. I like the now, theme. what you, what is it? That's based off the number of people who actually voted. Yes. You can right. say a percentage of your registered voters, and that's going to go significantly higher. Oh, yeah. So you can look at it like that. Instead of people who actually cast a vote, your registered okay. voters. You know what I'm saying? Like that? So a percentage of the registered voters. Yeah, but we still don't know by numbers. But we could go to 15. Oh, it's easy. Too. We got around, um, I, I know this data, I just looked at it three weeks it's ago. It's still not going to be that high of a number. It's around, I want to say, three or 4,000 people. So you got it. I mean, it's simple. You can just look at your demographics. So 30%. 18, you subtract it from I mean, the total population. So you can say 30%. So you probably got around 1,500 to 1,700, 1,800 people under 18. You just make it 1,500 people and call it that. Yeah. I don't have a problem with them because you well, if you do that, well, if you do that, then that number doesn't grow with your population. Whereas if you do a percentage, it does grow with your True. population. So that's well, it grows or so make fifty percent of the population since we're growing. Fifty? Yeah, that's a lot. So I wouldn't say a population. I would just say a registered voters. Registered voters, is what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So let's just say an arbitrary number. We have three thousand five hundred registered voters. So ten so percent of that is thirty-five or three fifty. Three fifty. But fifty percent of that would be fifteen hundred. And if we have ten thousand, it'd be five thousand. Yeah, that fifty percent is just a basic to read. Yeah, we well, don't read it. It don't matter to me. I'm, I'm just giving my opinion. Just say half. Because quite honestly, the people, the, the <laughs> that's half, it's, it's, it's got to sound like that. Gonna yeah. say yeah. Yeah. They're not going to take the time to read like it. Right. right, here's They're the deal. Half. Like, here's the deal. Like, <laughs> you, still have, you still have that, once it's on the ballot, you still have your registered voters who are going to turn out and do it. So I don't think you should discourage people. I'd say 50% is kind of abrasive. Yeah. 20, but 25 to 30 percent, maybe 20 percent of the 700. But can we wait and find out how many? How do we, we need to figure out how many registered voters we have? That's around 3,500. Okay, so what would 000. the percentage be to put it at around 1,500 signatures? That'd be about uh, 30, 20 percent of the uh, seven. Peggy, you got your can you look up board of elections? Are you I'm doing it right now. 40 percent of the 50 percent is what 1750. So do 40 percent. That puts you right around 1,500 of 6,000 people. That's doable. Well, let's just say in five years, though, we have right. 8,000 people. So now, you're gonna... now you need 4,000 signatures. You said 50% or 40? No, I said 40. That's saying that they're all going to be registered voters. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Call. Yeah, that's tough. Call. Well, you don't want to make it too high because then it looks like we're discouraging. Yeah. yeah. It's just what's that? What's that good number? And you know what? Maybe maybe it's there and as a low number just because it's just to get it on the ballot and then people vote on it. Ten percent. You know, because that's if you if you structure it how they do it now. Because um, if you structure it how we do it now, I mean, like I said, we only need ten percent of the registered voters that voted. I mean, ten percent of people who actually voted last time. That's hundred ninety three. Yeah. Like I said, that just gets it on the ballot. You know, especially. Um, that, especially with the liquid, that has to be in November. So you're going to have a big voter turnout. 
The flip side of this is if we're looking at all angles here, a special election can be in any, any day. You know, it could be a very low turnout. Right. Turn, look at the last election we just had. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. low people turned out. But I'm also a firm believer in too, that if it's a hot buck, buck, bucket item, people are gonna go vote for it. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think lower would be the best just to get on the ballot and then let your citizens do it. That's good. 10%, that's less than 500. Yeah. Man, you get it too low. I mean, I'm not trying to sound like but we have a special but election. You don't want people year. popping up a special election because they want. And keep in mind, special what's elections the, cost money. What's right. the cost of a special it's election? It depends. So about, the last time we did one, about it, was, grand. it was more than that. It was around 22000 Yeah. And how that works, though, Mr. Bond, is we don't send them a check for 22000 They just take it out of our property tax allocation. So let's just say we're scheduled you don't to get so way, we for well that either year. Send them or, yeah, I mean, it's. I'm saying you don't want a special election now, every however, time somebody gets a wild hair. Now, here's the other flip side of that, too. If there's already an election going on, then you don't get charged. So there's only certain ways you get charged. So let's say that we're the only ones on the ballot. That is it. That's when we get charged. And that's what happened. What did we do it last time? When or why? Yeah, we did a special election income tax credit petition. Oh, yeah. In 17. Because Dell saw this paper. I wrote that very, 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 very uh, article into the paper. How long does it take you to fill out your petitions to run for council? Mm. Sure. I can get them done in a day. You only need 50 signatures. 25 copies of your old ones. Yeah, but you. I, well, there you go. You just get, you just name it at one point. If, how many? If you guys have a very low signature to put to put yourself on the ballot, right? right? In the last election, like 255. Well, also don't cost. 200. Well, but that's, it doesn't cost anything. Yeah, I was going to say it doesn't cost money. That's part that's, of the. That's deal. the tough thing with a special election: the cost to everybody. For that. mm -hmm. That's 20 grand. Just. Yeah, and I don't know how they calculate that cost. I have no clue. Yeah. I, I, prefer, I like 30 better than 10 or 35. I like that number, 35. I'll compromise at 35. Can we put some commentary to, to clarify? I mean, just so somebody doesn't read that and then they go, ah, oh, they're just trying to discourage. Well, no, this was put in here because of the significant cost of a special election is considered to... Well, you can't say you don't know if there's going to be a cost. You well, can't say right now if someone it. does it. You can put potential cost. Potential yeah. cost. Yeah, something like that, just yeah. so they, they understand that that's one of the major considerations. It wasn't to discourage their voice or something yeah. like that. But someone may argue $20,000 when you have our operating revenue stream is not a lot of money. You know, hey, they can donate that for the special election. Great, <laughs> <laughs> you have no problem donating that money, would you? Twenty thousand bucks yeah. is a lot to me. So if we make Do you guys want me to look into this a little bit more? It's uh, I'm not forward. offering that. You guys yeah. decide. Forget it. Because I don't. I mean, I think it's just. A, I think it's a preference thing. There's no way this is. Thank you. What do you think, Mr. Bond? I'm fine with thirty-five. Mr. Graham? I'd like a little commentary in there though, too. If we have thirty-five hundred people. 35% is 1225. How much? 1225. I'm good. 35. You good? 35? Yeah. You know how long it would take to get that many signatures? It wouldn't yeah. take that long. Ooh. How many signatures did they get when they were arguing against the Scarf Road thing up on Lake? Yeah, but that, okay, but first off, you can't compare that because that was not a legal petition. Yeah. No, but I'm saying if they, if they really want to get signatures, it's not that hard. No, true. That's my two cents. Yep. All right. So 35% instead of yeah. mm -hmm. 500? No. Mm -hmm. 35% of <coughs> Is that across the board? No. Yeah. Do I need to do a motion on this or what? I think we're... Uh, we're and it, is it electors of the city of New Carlisle or is it registered voters or what are we... Registered voters. Of, of registered voters. But what yeah, are you saying, Mr. Voters. I think we're being too restricted. Well, I'll tell you what, the voters got to vote to send so you know right off the bat you're being too restricted. Because at the end of the day, they're voting that 35% in. Yeah. You, just because you make this change, it means it happened. It right. has to go through the ballot. Yeah. You know, so you might want to look at that strategy too, to just to, to be. Not that this is any of my earlier area expertise or kind of job responsibility. Thirty-five percent is kind of high. You know, I know it's against popular opinion, but again, you also going to have to think about: is this going to pass? Because if it doesn't pass, then it goes back to this five hundred. 
So that's something you want to take a look at. What's the chances of this being voted in at the polls? All right, Dale, 25%? Charter review very seldom ever passed. 20% would be 700. Five Start with the Charter Review. Yeah, and that's what we're going to go through as the number of registered votes. Let's go with 25%. Meet us at 25. Dale. Let's go with 25. We said we said 35, you said 20. We're bending more to yours than what, yeah. Yeah, let's go with 25%. What, what's, Mr. Cook, what's your opinion? As far as I'm concerned, that's the label alone. 25%. He has spoken high. Okay, let's go with that one then, I think. What? 25%. And that's based off of current population. So that number would grow when we have three more developments completed in 10 years. All right, well. And then they can change it when they re, re look at the charter. Okay, 20 or 25? 25. 25. 25. Bill's outvoted. 25 it is. All right, so what am I, what am I saying here? Okay, so outvoted. Signed by Nat Lyson, 25 percent of the registered voters. Make sure I get that on mic. I only wanted one person. I <laughs> just. Registered voters. That's going to read 25 percent of the registered voters as Dictated by the Clark County Board of Elections. Right. So they don't just, okay. Um, as dictated, That's I don't 25 like percent, not 20. As prescribed, as indicated by the Clark County Board of Elections. That's 25 percent, correct? As, does that even make sense? 25 percent of the registered voters are as indicated by the Clark County Board of Elections. Didn't pass voter votes. I think, and, and I don't mean it in a mean way, I just think a lot of people just see charter and they get scared and they don't know what it is. They're going to vote no. Yeah, and they do that. Yeah. Most Charters. charter amendments fail. Yeah. Charter is very similar. Of Although some of them have passed in recently. Oh, they yeah. have. Some of them have been. I've been watching that. Okay, so 20 percent of registered vote as indicated by the Clark County. Jake's going to change it anyway. Well, um, and then oh, the commentary. Yeah, commentary. Due to expenses or potential expenses. Due to the potential expenses of a, this amendment was put in place due to the potential. Costly expense. Uh, Ooh, that might, that just might make people mad right there. Maybe just leave it alone. You don't put any commentary at all. Cause if I'm voting, I'm like, well, heck, I mean, this is an important matter to me. City's got money, why is $20,000 or whatever too much? So you might want to look at that with how it may impact or not impact your your vote to turn out. Mr. Bond, how about you? That's a good point. Um, I don't think it's going to pass anyway, but yeah. you might want to, sometimes the less information you have is better. Because you may not want to give them a reason why you're changing it, you're just changing it. I'm not, not saying we're trying to hide anything from them. No, public, we're just the more changing. information you give them, they're going to be more unclear, and they may be more not to not move forward. Yeah. So if I go vote, I don't understand a measure bill. I just, just leave it. Leave it. Um, qualified voters as identified in section 9.03. Yeah, they all have to be residents in the city. Oh, that's okay. It says right there. So we qualify. Okay. So what'd you say, Dale? Twice for the registered as indicated in section 0.93. Mm -hmm. I like that. As indicated by, and that takes the BOE out of it. Would you take out of it? So it's, it's going to say um, signed by not less than 25% of the registered voters as indicated by section point, section 9.03 below. Okay. Is that way it goes and it says it has to be qualified and it has to be of you know, the qualified electors. Okay. As indicated by section 9.03 below. Okay. Let me start this page. Okay. Are we trucking through on Article 10? How much more we got left? A lot. Yeah. We've got five pages. Yeah, we, we don't have much. You know, well, well, we still got to do, we we still go to do discussion on the... Um, do you want to go till the eight or do you want to... Hmm, okay. Alcohol. So we still got to leave Get about done. five, ten minutes for that too. All the other chatter. We can move. Let's just, let's try to press through this real quick. Okay. Public engagement. I think this is new because the word inclusive is in there. Uh, let me look. 
Which one? Number? Article 10, it says rules of public engagement. I don't ever remember seeing that in the chart. No, that it's new, be. something they put in there. Oh, I'm not, okay, that's on you guys though. So this is after nine. Yeah, it's a whole, this role of public engagement is there. So do you guys want to, and that's all 10, it goes to 10.1, that's only a page. Do you guys want to read that on your own since it's new and then come back to it? Because that might take some thought. Because you might want to look at what that's including, what it's not including. Um, and I'm saying that by not reading anything. I just know it's wordy and it's got some um, it's got some keywords in there you guys might want to take a look at. Okay. Personally, I would I would want to inclusive and equitable taken out. I'm good with the rest of it. Why do you want inclusive taken it out? You because do understand everybody that. is human. Well, unfortunately, you know? that doesn't work like that. Well, so. Because your current bargaining agreement has protections in there, that council voted in. So, and that's what I'm saying. You might want to look at it. I want to look at it myself just to make sure that we are on the same page of what inclusive actually means and all that stuff. I don't think it has anything to do with discrimination or including people with their identifying as a. I just, you know, I don't think it has anything to do with that. What does it have to do with? Being inclusive to everyone. So I'm saying you guys should read this on your own because it's brand new. I don't, mm -hmm. I've never read it. Okay, so move on to 10-3. I don't think it has, I think it's fine. It, it, it just says that you treat public engagement as an integral part of your governance. It has the different ways that you can engage, whether it be face-to-face, -face meeting, virtual. Digital and real-time public engagement platform. We do digital, we do real-time. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with what we... What Youth I, engagement. Yeah, I mean, it does, I don't see anything. Yeah, me. it just says basically how you involve your public. Yeah. And include everyone. It doesn't say, like, you know... Yeah. It has nothing to do with gender identification or anything like that. Yeah, I got gotcha. that. Yeah. I mean, what are you talking about? 10.01? No, role of public engagement. So it had that word inclusive on it, which is a key word exactly. nowadays in today's society. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it has nothing to do with that. It just basically says, you know, how council en engages the public. Right. Whether it be face to face meetings and stuff like that. Basically, encourage. Well, that's under 10.01, is how we engage the public. Right, it's Article 10. Role yeah, Article 10 as a whole. So then it goes in principles of public engagement. I still think you guys should read it because it's gonna take a lot of time just to go through it now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Let me note that we're gonna, we'll, at the next meeting, can you guys, can we talk about the next meeting you think? Is that enough time for you guys to go through it? Yeah. Okay, so, all right. Um, discuss section 10 acts. June 20th, thank you. Yeah. So oh, it has comments. Have, it's, it's commentaries. It establishes construction support public engagement for proceedings. Yeah, I think you guys should read it, but I think it'll be fine. Um, all right, so we're going on to 11? Yeah. And that is something that is over my head. So that's on you guys to decide because that's more the politics side of things. I don't think this has changed any from the. Uh, well, something's changed. It's March 22 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh, 1103 is in there, Natural Charter Review Commission. So if you want to change the frequency about how this is reviewed, that would be done in 11.03. So right now it says every eight years, which I think is a good. I don't think it should be. As long as we stick to that. With the charter review, eight years? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Five? No, it's too soon. Five years is like a blink of an eye. Yeah. Almost taking us five. So where were we at? Eleven oh three. Yeah, it's taking us five years for this one. Who <laughs> <laughs> began with four? I didn't see anything in three. Four for an amendment. 
Um, I think I already have that noted. Which one? Hold on. Oh, we're nepotism, but really, um, we're researching not to put under 4.07 prohibition. English is time slower. Nepotism? Ne uh, nepotism? Under what? 4.07 prohibitions. We talked about that right. first time around. I was going to put it in here somewhere, but I, I don't think it needs to go here. Okay. Like, I, I was going to, conflict of interest is where it sparked it, but I'm like, wait a minute, I thought we had to discuss that. Right. 1101A1. Uh, A 1101? A1. They can force a referendum on an ordinance with 10%, a petition with 10% of the total number of registered voters who voted in the last regular election. Is that changing? That should, or do be, you that should be 10% of, of the registered voters. Well, that would be, uh, yeah. That's what we had to do when we got the ballot signature yeah. for the alcohol. And we have what, maybe a thousand or two to vote in the regular election? Yeah. Yeah, because we only need 193 or something, signatures, so not a lot. We're going to probably get those Saturday when we walk on the streets. What do you think? You want to raise that to higher? Or? No, I'm just thinking for the, what we just did. Oh, to said, change it? 30, 25 percent. So that we have a, a vast difference is yeah. what you're getting at. Do so you want to change this one then to, to match the other one? No, I think you want to bring the other one down. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> nice try, Dale. <laughs> so let me see if that is a statutory requirement somewhere with Jake. Um, as far as that 10 percent goes on, on and referendums I, I think it is and for the referendums it's usually 10 percent of the last gubernatorial yeah. election so but it would be the same what i can do is note to have jake look at that and then at the next meeting we can say if we can change it bring it up then because i don't want to tune all the discussion and find out it changed because mm -hmm. it is under referendum which is right. completely different than what we just talked about does that make sense yep you okay with that okay so that would be 1101 a1 and, and it may be that, that he would say that it would be, instead of the last regular election, it would be the last gubernatorial election. Because that's usually where they get to 10%. Because so, more, people, more people would vote in a governor's election or a presidential election than they would on a, say, a school board election. Mm -hmm. Nothing else on there. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it, I think it should, should if the, and it may be statutory too, that it, it has to have the governor's election, gubernatorial election, instead of a regular election. Well, and then when you go to what? So I have Jake looking at the ten percent. Fifteen percent. Should I have Jake look? Mm -hmm. Should I have Jake look at registered voters or the people who actual voters or registered voters? So right now I just have Jake looking at the ten percent requirement. Not 10% of registered voters or 10% of who actually. Well, it, it's it would, it more than likely on a referendum, it, the 10% uh, and Jake would, may know. Do you want me to inquire about it, that it requirement too, as in addition the to the 10%? People that voted, on this one. but I think it should be in the governor's election, not just the regular plus a regular election. 10% of registered voters for those who voted. Voter turnout, I guess. Okay. Voter turnout. Okay. Good. Anything else on 11? To recall somebody, it takes 15%. 11.82. Yeah. What, you said B? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 15%. I mean, they haven't done that in a long time. I think, who was it the last person that was recalled? It was a long time ago. Um, what section was it? The Gene Collier was one of them. Yeah, yeah, it had to do with Madison Street School Project. Yeah, Daryl Bauer, Gene Collier, there was, was three of them. Was it over the Madison Street School Project? Yeah, project? it was over the school, I think. Yeah. What section are you looking at? I don't see the repo yet. Let's not down for 1102 it. 1102B. 1102B. 
So is that another thing you guys want to have Jake look at? Because I think it's weird you got these different percentages mm -hmm. in different areas. So yeah, uh, maybe let's look, oh, see okay. if it should be a clean sweep across the board type thing. That, and if not so much a clean sweep, but is that 50% as ORC requirement? Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Just see if they should all be in line with each other. Um, what I want to do, let me see page. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was, the Madison School. That's what it was. I got that cleaned up. Alrighty, so you're checking on that, so we can go down to... Uh, 1103. 1103. Charter Review Commission. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I'd say, I mean, it's, it's worked for... Yeah, I haven't seen it in all day. It's worked for years. There's no four. Charter amendment. Did they add something in here? Thanks. Our current 1104 is Charter Review Commission. So we have a section point oh three separability. They took out. Am I in the right it's city? The Hold on, where am I at? Separability is at the end. It, where? They moved it. Uh, Article 13. Article 13, transition and severability provisions. Thirteen oh six, very end. The provisions of the charter shall not be affected thereby. Oh, okay. Okay. So what's the new 1103? So 1102 used to... No, wait a minute, something's off. Mm -hmm. 1102... Oh, because they added a whole section of everything up to stab one. Okay, yeah. I'm on the same page. Sorry. 1103 is charter review. 1104 is charter amendment. Someone wanted to charge their iPad today. I won't be on this phone. I charged mine. First time it's been at 100%. Oh, you I plugged it into the Apple. I just wasn't plugged into the wall. I got pulled out from the wall the weekend ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. so. It's just a numbering issue. I'm going to hold the group up. I can fix that later. Okay, we're on the Article 12 now, General Provisions. Mm -hmm. Conflict of interest. So I think that is, I think all this is different. So we have general provisions in 11.01, .01, which is going to be 12.01, so they added that, is. What's the original charter saying? Like? I'm trying to match it up, 12.01. in the world? Am I in the right place? Under Article 7. Yeah. Twelve. It's section twelve. Oh yeah, it's article twelve. Sorry, I read it wrong. I was adding instead of reading it. Article twelve starts with twelve point oh one off officers and employees. On our chart, current charter. On the old one. The new okay. one. The new one starts off with general yeah, provision. Am I on the right one then? Because. I'm in New Carlisle, Ohio. I go to our charter section. And I go down to general provisions. The first one is not conflict of interest. It is officers and employees. No, it's personal financial interest. Section 11.01 currently. Well, that would be included in conflict of interest. Let me see what it says. Any salt. You have commented this heavily. Yeah, they completely changed 11.01. Well, it's 12.01 here. 11.01 on the current charter and then 12.01 on your paper in front of you. So 11.01 in our current charter is personal financial interest 
and it's about three or four paragraphs long. And it starts with any city officer, employee, or member of any board, I'm just going to read it, commission who has financial interest, direct or indirect, or by reasons of ownership of stock of 5% or more in any corporation, in any contract with the city or sell land material supplies. That's what it says here, personal financial interest. And it's not even listed on, unless it's somewhere else. Well, it's included in where? 1201A1. Does it have a 5%? Oh, okay, they just yeah. renumbered it. Okay, so let's see if this they is just the shuffle same things thing. around a little bit. So it generally probably says the same thing. They just bullet pointed it out, maybe. Acting in official capacity. It's changed a little bit. What I don't know if it generally says the same thing or not. Oh, yeah, there it is. It took me a minute to find it. Yeah, it took me a minute to find it, too. So you guys might want to read what they are proposing because it is a little different. Well, it seems that they've made it a little more readable. Yeah. They added more to it. See where it says like one 5% on, on what you're reading, Dale? It says 5% or more of any corporation, any contract with the yep. city. On our current charter, No, it says the same thing along. See where it stops. In performance of such contract. They don't have anything about the acceptance of gifts. So two, three, four. That does. Yeah, it, it, it is it value. It's number two, A2. acceptance of gifts or other things of value. No, it's 1102 below it. Is that what you said? 1101A2. I understand that it's on here. Yeah. It's not on our current charter. It's here. So it has to be, this will be voted in. Yes. Okay, and the council's okay with that as well. I'm trying to get it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. But it's official, it shouldn't be accepted. Why is this yes. section so confusing? <laughs> okay, at the end of the day, is council good with that section? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to understand. <laughs> move on. <laughs> <coughs> so, prohibition of penalties, that's already there. It's currently there. This article deals with the transitional procedures that govern the change from the former government structure plan to the current charter manager plan. There's no formal effect on the operation of the city. Well, then that's me to go. Which part are you looking at? I'm um, ahead of you guys. Article 13, 13. Transition and Severability Provisions. Okay. Just trying to figure out. If it doesn't have any impact on city operation, why is it there? So, is it even new? Oh, no. Ooh, that's a pass administrator. Oh, I hate It looks like it's all the same. I don't think they changed anything. I'm sorry, I'm probably heading you guys. You're in 1302, right? Yeah, on oh, 13. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's all the same. Nothing, adoption, that's all the same. One sentence, yes. D is B, is the same. Yeah. Personnel system the well, same. Aggressive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. 
take the NATO trainer for trending matter. Huh, you mean addition? No, per year. So, oh. It's per year the salary. <laughs> I don't think there's much in 13 you guys should change. Except, well, well you have your initial comp, you have, well, that's initial comp. That's initial compensation. So the key word to this section is. I think it's fine. The article Part deals with transitional procedures. We'll find out who wants to actually help that the city you or not. You have to give how, money back. How then. bad do you want this charter to pass? Right. <laughs> so article 13, uh, or article whatever this is. Yeah, 13. Yeah. You guys can't change it. Don't change anything. Because if uh, you look at that first thing, this is what guided the change from a went to a strong mayor form of government to a strong manager form of government. And these were the trend. That's why it says transition. So if you read that first paragraph underneath there, it says this article deals with the transitional procedures which govern the change from former government structure plan to the current charter manager plan. It has no form or effect on the operation of the city. So there's okay. no one even confuse the voters. Then we can delete town title 13. I would no, I'd keep it because it, it says transitional how it happened before. I wouldn't change it because if you remove it, you have to put it on the voters. It's just going to confuse them. Okay. That's what I would do. I just leave it saying. So if that's the case, then that's it looks the like end we're the end of it. We're good. So you might want to look at the other attachments that it's sent out. They do have some stuff on here about social equality and local governments. That's ultimately up for your council. I don't know if this goes in there or what, but this is like a six page document. So just read that at your own leisure. And then what I'm going to do is we still have the one section 10 you guys got to look at you for um, July you know, for the next meeting in June and then what I'll do is kind of summarize all the changes we made and then get them out to you guys um, and then I got to figure out how we do put it on the board of elections but that's what Jake's for so you're the uh, council mayor's compensation doesn't need to be addressed no because that falls into the uh, when they because that whole section is that's initial pay. compensation that's okay. how, yeah that's, that's how they first got paid I think to change your pay rate it's under your Ordinances. Oh, no, ordinance. it's, is it ordinance or is it rules of council? <laughs> ordinance. ordinance. The no, the change your pay rate's got to go through ordinance, but I think it, in the charter it says somewhere that it doesn't take effect until the next. It does. Yeah. yeah so it. that's already covered. Okay. So like if, if we would change the pay rate. Right. Well, 600 per year. Never mind. Yeah, Nobody per year. did it until uh, the next election cycle. 1306 separability. Right. Should that be separate from section 13? Mm, I don't want to look at it. The very end. The last paragraph. Well, that just that just means that if any of it is the court deems illegal, the rest of it, the rest stays, of it still holds. But oh, again, yes. it says it deals with transition. Well, hold on, because I think it's transitional, and, so, and I think that's hold on. So the title is trans. The whole article title, Mr. Graham, is transition and severability provisions. And that is the only mention of severability. Or should severability be its own set? Provision of this charter is held inviolable by the court, or other provisions of this charter should not be affected thereby. No, you were Yeah, actually, I think you're right. Make it section 14, the end. Yeah. In the new barrier, it shouldn't be part of the yeah. transition. I think well, it's it there because it says transition and separability in the title of the article. But at the beginning, it says it deals with only with the transition. So it kind of contradicts itself there. So where would you guys like this? So Make section it 14. 14. Make it section, oh, section 14, 14 separability. separability. Yeah. And take separability off the title of 13. That was easy. Yeah, it was. He just went all night. <laughs> Only took us two hours to get to it. <laughs> Where's my page that has it on right here? No other business? No, we got to talk about this. Yeah. yeah, it'll take uh, two seconds. I was hoping you would say that it the adjourn. So um, that resolution, it'll it take two seconds. And of course, it's just my recommendation how you guys pursue it is on your own. Yeah. Um, so that resolution you guys pass in support of the local liquor option on the ballot. It says in there that council is to hold one or more public information campaigns. It could be a public hearing. It could be whatever. Um, my recommendation is during a regular council meeting, you guys just bring it up, say, does anyone have any questions on this? And yeah. then move on. And you want to do that because 
this question is only being submitted to Carlisle one. Right. Not being submitted to Carlisle two. It's not being submitted to Carlisle three. So. Or anyone in Miami County. Or anyone in Miami County or anything like that. So um, part of the group, I do know some of their discussion have been to streamline the informational campaign to those who are going to be impacted and those who have to vote. Right, right. So my recommendation, just to satisfy that resolution you guys passed, is one of the council meetings before in the next couple months to say, we're going to have a Q&A session regarding the local ballot issue. Mm -hmm. If someone gets to ask questions, boom, we move on, we are done, then you guys have satisfied that resolution requirement. The other thing you can do is set up a booth at the farmer's market if you want to do that, but then you're going to have a lot of people coming at you for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So basically that's just what it is. I will be correcting myself at a regular council meeting. So um, at one of the previous ones I had stated that um, the liquor side of things, that someone wanted to go to get a Jack and Coke, they could because it was a mixed beverage, um, but they couldn't get a shot of Jack Daniels because it wasn't mixed with anything. So I do need to correct myself on that because they would not, we would not be able to sell Jack Daniels in the city limits whatsoever. They could get a dil more diluted whiskey. Um, it has to be, anything that we sell here has to be below 21% alcohol proof. So that is your Kroger vodka you see there, that kind of because it's a state, that's how the state law prescribes it. Oh, if you want to do anything, yeah, do that. <laughs> if you want to do anything stronger than that, then that goes into your spiritus liquors. So that is your Jack's, that's your name brand yeah. tequilas. You know, that's what that is. So um, we don't recommend, ultimately it's the petitioner's final decision of how she wants to do it. Um, but the group, I think, and the petitioner has decided just to keep that particular uh, ballot measure off to be able to do the spiritus liquors and just start with this. Because right now you've got to have to have 40% of your Baby sales steps. has to be food versus yeah. if you do spiritual liquors, you don't have to sell any food at all. You can just have a bar. So I will be clarifying that out. I wanted to clarify it to you guys too now, but then doing that at a live meeting too. So the vast majority of the citizens, if they do watch it, would be able to understand that's what it was. It's been a learning experience for this. I love doing new things like this because you learn a lot. You really do. Um, so it's been, it's been great. But definitely it's not. You would not be able to sell Jack Daniels or Jose Cuervo in the city limits whatsoever. Uh, when are you guys going door to door? Um, Saturday. Who's all going? Um, right now, me and Tim. I don't know if um, Tim. Jude from 571 Bar and Grill. Oh. Yeah. So. Um, you yeah. guys going together? Or you guys going like separate ways? We'll probably do it together. Okay. You know, it's good to have his face there because he's the owner of 571, and then I know a lot of people up there, so it's good for me. I'll be going door to door with all the groups because I'm I know a lot of people. If now. you guys need help, let me know. When Saturday. Um, we haven't set a time yet, to be honest with you. I'll let you know. Let me know. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully it's good weather. I'm going to show up. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> show up with That goes against the our bottom of Jack. Get classy, Mike. If you can't keep it classy. Get one of those hats. Then. It's got the beer on top. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. The straw. <laughs> the straw. The Viking yeah. horns. Just it, paint it your face while you're at it. two fifths. Right. No. But no, I <laughs> honestly, I think it. we're going with Twin Creeks first because it's all concentrated there. You know, they're going to want they're going to want it. So mm -hmm. we're just going to go after that. Then we'll go to some of the uh, uh, president streets like the Clays. Of, um, I don't, I got to look. I don't know what streets are covered, but some of them are covered back here for Carlisle one. Yeah. So um, our goal is to get um, way more signatures than the 193 um, just because they'll go in and validate so many right off the bat, you know. So um, I don't think we'll have any issue. Um, and we got some pretty big names behind us. Ms. Eggleston's there. That's a recognizable name. We have 571 helping us out. That's yeah. an extremely recognizable name. Then locally, we have Penny Lane going out with us as well. So we oh, we're going to be going? Well, we got two big heavy hitters in the okay. region for businesses that are going to be out there. So it's a great way to break the ice. Cool. All right. Any other business? Motion to second. Well, hold on. I'm the, I'm the council yeah, here, so i got to figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> so motion to adjourn. And Mr. Cook and second by Mr. Lindsay. Hold on here. Let me get this right here. You start with nah, don't tell me. You start with him. <laughs> All right, so let me write these names down real quick before I call so I don't get backtracked. Did you say anybody say no? I'll okay, so we got a motion to adjourn at uh, 8 10. 10. First, First by Councilman Cook, second by Councilman Lindsay. We'll call for the vote. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Bond, do we need Sorry. to approve Dan Rudolph's absence? Yes, oh, we do. We do. 
Can you? I rescind it? my second. Rescind your motion. Man, can we, can we just say it never happened? Yeah, it never happened. Thank you. I don't want to. M M I move to. Motion to excuse. To excuse Dan. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. To excuse Now, me. can we run these in, t together? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Can you? No. <laughs> so who was the second? I'm sorry. Mr. Hey. Vice Mayor. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Yes. Well, um, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Yes. Vice Ma uh, Mayor Lowry. Yes. yes. And then Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Okay. Move okay. to adjourn. Oh my lord, this is why I don't like doing clerk stuff. And Peggy adjourn. second it. So motion to adjourn by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. All in favor say aye. The Lindsay P. E. Uh, Councilman Cook. Yes. 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 Yes, that's great. I'm just going to write it down. Thank you. We adjourned at 8 o'clock. Okay, we're done. Yeah.